Hello, my name is Hayden Sita. This is Annalie Tipton, and you are watching The Film Fix. Hey everyone, welcome back to The Film Fix. It's Layla here, and I am back on The Film Fix after many years of being away. Today we are here at the 43rd Annual Atlanta Film Festival, and we are going to see some world premieres of some features and some short films. We're super excited to see Joseph Cross's first movie he's directed, Summer Night, which was filmed in Newton, Georgia, and also partly filmed in my house. We're very excited. So tonight, talent is anticipated, and they have set out a red carpet for all the directors and actors that are going to be coming to the premieres of the movie. We are very excited to meet some people. We are here with Megan Wong, and she is one of the directors of the short films here, and she's going to tell us a little bit about it. Um, hey, thanks so much for having me. I directed the short film In Full Bloom, which stars the Vietnamese actress Q Chin. She was also in the Joy Luck Club. It's a surreal, magical realism, weird fiction short film about an older Vietnamese ho hoarder who's also agoraphobic. And she wants to garden in her house, but there's not a lot of sunlight and it's a little bit difficult. So she orders some worms to help her, but they end up opening a giant black hole in her house and kind of wreaking havoc in her life. Um, the film, I don't, it's hard to say exactly what I was inspired by, really just my own imagination and thinking about my grandmother who passed away, who's Vietnamese, and uh, just wanting to make something about loss and missing people and what that really means. Um, I grew up in East Lansing, Michigan, um, and I now live in Los Angeles, and I work in television and film. Um, I recently worked as a writer on the TV show Counterpart um, for season two, so yeah. How did working on Counterpart influence your short film? Working on Counterpart has been a great experience. It's a sci-fi espionage show. It's a really grounded show, and so therefore it taught me a lot about making sure things that are character driven, that it's driven by emotion, even if there are fantasy and sci-fi elements, as well as just, I think, making me a better writer, which is the benefit of being able to work in a writer's room. So yeah, I'm very grateful to have worked on the show. That's wonderful. So tell us a little bit about your casting process and what it was like to work with this star from Joy Luck Club. Um, casting for the film was a little difficult because I wanted to cast an older Asian American woman and I really wanted to cast an older Vietnamese American woman and there aren't that many actors that are still working. Um, Q Chin is one of the main actresses that is still working and I was really lucky to have her in the movie. She. I reached out to her through friends and I also contacted her manager and she agreed to sign on and she, I couldn't have made the film without her. She's a phenomenal actress, she did an amazing job and she makes the movie better. It's always difficult or challenging to be a woman, a female filmmaker because there aren't that many of us and so sometimes it's hard for people to take us seriously but what's nice is when you have a community then it encourages other people to see that um, you know we can be directors. So we just got out of seeing Moments in the Multiverse, and we are here with the producer of Holy Moses and the director. It's a short film starring Amanda Seyfried and Thomas Sadowski and Philip Ettinger and Dan Backadall. And it's a, um, yeah, it's a, it's a short film. I, I thought it's like a religious comedy. You know, it takes place in Ireland in the 60s and Texas in the 80s as well, and um, great audience turnout. And Justice? You alright? You want to call Doc Bob, have him come down here and take a look at you? I, I, I don't need no uh, goddamn Doc Bob. This ain't my blood. Well, whose blood is it, Justice? Uh, go take a look inside. What am I going to see inside? Just go take a look. All right. You just wait here. Don't go nowhere, okay? Well, where, where am I going to go? There's no place to go. Right. Hey, uh, Sheriff. Yeah, Justice. Yeah, I just, I, ne I just never seen uh, something like that. Is all. Okay. 
So you just go ahead and stay here. I'll be back in a minute. Yeah, Thad, would you, would you have anything to say about that? Yeah. Would you so, I mean, so it's it's really cool to, to see theaters full of people, especially I was excited about Atlanta. It's done a really great job of filling the theaters full of people who are actually just, like, really excited about seeing everything. Because we spent over, I think, two years working on this thing. So being able to bring it to places and share with people is, like, a, it's a real treasure. Can you tell us a little bit about the origin of the story and how it came to your mind? Well, um... There's a lot of different origins for it. I mean, I didn't talk about it on stage, but there's this weird like news story um, where this cow wandered into a convenience store in Germany and they shot it and killed it. And so there's just this like, you know, news article that just had this dead cow lying there like bleeding. And that was like the first image for me. I was like, that's just, I just want to take that image and just transplant it somewhere else. So I just took that and then put it in Texas and started thinking like, okay, where did the cow come from? And I was like, well, maybe it's from Ireland and maybe it's Ireland in the 60s. Maybe there's nuns there. So it's sort of like, I guess, kind of happened backwards. It was one of those classic, like, how'd you get into Hollywood moment? You kind of, you know, they were like, uh, Amanda needs a personal assistant. I became her personal assistant. And then, um, yeah, over time, we just sort of became friends. And I really wanted to write something for her that I, I feel like I hadn't seen her do before. And, you know, and um, yeah, and then from, from there, like, uh, her husband was interested in reading it, and he read it, and he liked it, and I, I you know, Thomas Sadowski is a brilliant actor, um, and then he brought in Dan, Dan Backadall, because Tommy and Dan are both on Life in Pieces, or were on Life in Pieces together at the time, and yeah, it's sort of like, that's sort of the, the snowball trajectory of, of the actors coming on board. I'm really lucky to work with them, yeah. It makes my writing so much better, too, you know? You could write anything, but just like, having an, like an amazing actor read your writing just makes you sound like a much better writer, I think. Oh, yeah. What's it like working with a cow? Oh, it's horrible. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend working with farm animals. I, 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 wouldn't, I don't think I'd do it again. Yeah, yeah I, I, I think that cow was like 387, was that? Uh, it, wasn't it? 387. 380, cow 387. I just remembered it was, it was such a terror. 367. Yeah, the cow it just wouldn't, wouldn't stay put, you know. So there's actually in the this, in this scene when the cow is just standing there in the middle of, like, the snowy field, we actually have a woman, like, holding it so it won't run away. And then we had to rotoscope her out. So... Wow. Yeah, I mean, it's a diva. It was diva. The, the cow was more of a, you know, yeah, yeah. demanded more than any of the other human actors. I thought. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much for your time, yeah, and thank you for sharing your film with us. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Hey everyone, we are here at the world premiere of Summer Night. We are waiting for Joseph Cross to make an appearance for his premiere movie. We're so excited. We're at the red carpet, and we can't wait to see the film. Well, the script came to me, and I loved the script, and I thought, you know, there's something really special here. So we got into it and started working and developing it and making it better and better until we felt it was at a place where we could start talking to cast about it. Yeah, we were fortunate. Cast really responded well, and then we uh, dug into the financing of it, which is the, the boring part. So what's... <laughs> so um, how'd you like working in Noonan and in Georgia? I love Noonan. Noonan will always hold a very special place in my heart. I love the people of Noonan, like you guys, obviously. Uh, and um, yeah, I mean, I just, like I said up there, you know, you really get to experience Southern hospitality here. And for, for a New Yorker, you know, we don't have that. So uh, it's really, it's really nice. That's great. Thank you so much for talking with us. Thank you. No worries. We are here with one of the stars of Joseph Cross's Summer Night. This is Hayden Sito, and I just wanted to ask you a few questions. So how did you like filming in Georgia, in Noonan, Georgia? It was humid. Um, it was very sweaty, but I lost a lot of weight. Um, I ate a lot of good food. Uh, Mary Max Tea Room, one of my favorites. Um, and uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. I liked the people here. The nightlife is great. And it's even more fun when you have like a whole ensemble cast, you know, just hang out in, in a giant group in the city. What's it like being a minority in the film industry? What's it like? I don't know, because it's the only thing that I know, you know, because I don't have experience being a majority. So um, I can only tell you that um, I think there's a... I think we often romanticize as minority actors that, you know, it's hard, it's, it's so difficult, people are mean to you, but that's just how actors are treated. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? It's hard for everybody across the board, I guarantee you. I mean, I know, I know many actors that are not of the minority that are working three jobs and are still struggling, you know? You know, words of privilege there, you know? And I was just one of the ones that were lucky. Um, but luck is also a part of, you know, it, 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 the harder you work, the luckier you get. I know it's cliche, but like, it, it, it really is. Like, if you just don't stop believing in it and you keep working towards it, you will get your due. So uh, my experience, uh, I had a very, nothing was unexpected for me. Like I wouldn't say anything was more difficult for me, but yes, I am more, I'm seeing more roles for Asian Americans now, definitely. Like I, I'd be lying if I, I turned a blind eye to that. Like since Crazy Rich Asians, I mean, there are like lots of pilots that went this year that are all, an all Asian American cast, all Asian American movies that are coming out. So there's definitely progress. Um, but I think, you know, for us to really progress is that we, you know, hopefully one day we don't have to talk about progress. Yes. It's that it's just, you know, consistent. Yeah, yeah. there's just a norm. Yeah. yeah. Um, one last question. Do you have any advice for any aspiring actors or actresses out there? Yes, no matter what color you are, work, 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 work on your craft. Get into a class, it's gonna feel dumb, you're gonna pay somebody so you can act. It's really expensive, you're gonna be in a lot of debt, but if it's what you love, that's a really good test for it. Like, how bad do you want this, you know? So keep working on it, and you know, actors growing up in this generation are blessed with YouTube. <laughs> like, you can at any time go, because podcasts are so huge now, you have long conversations with, like, you can just choose somebody that you admire, that you aspire to be to, and you just, pick their brain, you know, or watch them get their brain picked and you're like, oh my God, I'm like, this is information that you probably won't get, you know, uh, you know, like 10, 15 years ago, you know, you, now there's an endless library of info that can help you. And all the movies are with a, a, a click of a button away. You don't have to go out to the archives, you know, you don't have to go to a blockbuster anymore. I'm like, it's all there, you know, you, it's just, it, can you make the right choices, you know, and you, you got to work. And that's choice number one. Thank you so much. Thank you. So he, we are here with Aunt Annalie, mm -hmm. Annalie Tipton, and she is one of the stars of Summer Night. I just wanted to ask you a few questions about the movie. What was it like giving input on the script and you know having your word in the process? I never wanted to be an actor. Um, I moved out to Los Angeles for writing and directing, and. Some actors feel like you know their their job, and I respect this so much, is is to really form to what whatever it is they, they are told. I disagree, at least for me, um, because I I have done so many female roles as like the the best friend or the the you know the love interest that have been um, poor, they they've been shallow, they've been um, not fleshed out. It's it's often. Uh, you don't see that as much nowadays, thankfully, but definitely when I was starting out, that was that was a big thing. Um, so I don't, I, I don't want to do a film if I don't believe that I'm representing women, right? And I'm representing my own integrity um, and morals. Uh, for this one, it was just the, the initial script, my character, was very angry, was very angry at him and the entire time was, would just say, um, uh, what are you doing, this sucks, your friends suck, you're being selfish. She's, a, she's pregnant, she's in college. That's not what a girl thinks about. Not a girl who wants a career, not a girl who is, who is on her own. She doesn't give a heck <laughs> about <laughs> his friends being selfish. And so it's things like that that really, um, you know, I, I wanted to incorporate the fact that she had a path. And it's things like that, and, and thank, thank heavens that, um, that Joe is, is so fantastic about seeing those things and, and making them work. Because also, you never want to um, say something that doesn't need to be there. I try to, try to make everything helpful, not extra. Less, in fact, just helpful. That was a long answer. See, I talk no, a lot too. I love it. I love <laughs> it. Um, one last question for you. What's it like being a strong female lead in the film industry? And 
being a strong woman actor. I don't think I'm seen as one. Um, so thank you. I think I am often cast as um, uh, a, a quirky um, or very, very sweet and, and gentle. Um, <laughs> sweet and, and, and gentle person, even uh, often more of a um, um, shallow, uh, not, not a lot going on, <laughs> um, because I don't fit the bill of a, of a strong woman. And it's really frustrating because even though the, fr the, the, the film industry is changing slowly, um, I do believe they still cast in, in a very specific type. And then it makes you feel like, well, to be a strong woman, I have to be that. To, you know, um, be a feminist, I have to be this. Um, so it's, it's frustrating to be a strong woman in the film industry who is constantly not allowed to be or not assumed I am. And uh, I started writing and that gives a lot of that confidence back because I'm, 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 I'm tired of, of waiting for someone else's voice to understand what I want to say. And I think the most important thing as a young woman going into acting is to remember that and to not mold to what Hollywood is telling you to. They will tell you to mold. They will tell you you have to mold. You don't. In fact, everyone I think who really truly makes it, you just be yourself because you are like no one else on the earth. And that's what they're trying to capture. And that is the end of our wonderful day at the 43rd Annual Atlanta Film Festival. Today we've had some amazing opportunities. I've got to meet Joseph Cross, the director of Summer Night, and I also got to meet some of the stars of the film. I also saw many wonderful short films and got to rush the red carpet. This is your host, Leila Khan-Hickman, and you are watching The Film Fix.